So let's see, let's talk about number seven. It's very similar to number nine. Um, Yeah, and then there's a handout, um, which I finally made it to to work. But um, you you got a copy right last time, so. Um, and then, so again, I'll take any questions, and then we'll uh, start talking about chapter um, nine. Uh, more about nonlinear methods but of a global nature, so not just around an equilibrium or something. Uh, so let's see, any any questions for you? Maybe try those? The last one of the handout. Yeah. Does that, do you do that with polar coordinates? Is that a hard time to get that? Uh, probably not. No. So let's see, finding equilibria wasn't the problem, right? Do you still get only one equilibrium? Okay. Uh, linearization, probably because you don't have the symmetry, the rotational symmetry. Um, I just had an x squared plus y squared term in the I wondered if that was the key to... to yeah, definitely that's that helps. So there are these systems that have um, Like this one, at x squared plus y squared, that's the radius from the origin squared, the distance from the origin squared. Um, and also, also this is important. This, this gives you that rotation, y and negative x. So, um, in other words, okay, not all the systems can be uh, easily represented in other change, changing the variables, for instance, the polar coordinates. Yeah. I have a question. It's on the point array. This one. That one. You've got one equilibrium of the origin, and then you've got periodic solutions for some lambda. Um, you know, did you call that the periodic solutions in each equilibrium? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Well, that's a question. Well, there are equilibrium and periodic solutions, right? Equilibrium is just a point that's fixed. Yeah. But I think, don't you also get, uh, I think zero is, zero, zero is also always an equilibrium. So in a way this, but it's an unstable equilibrium. It becomes unstable. So even though it's periodic, it doesn't really go anywhere except for... It's time dependent. Yeah, it's still time dependent. So equilibrium would be something that's time independent, fixed, doesn't change. Doesn't move. Steady state. Um, yeah, but but yeah, uh, in the range of uh, lambda is positive, you actually get periodic solutions. And I think you see this. Well, we'll see this in polar coordinates when you convert to polar coordinates. But um, okay, right. And you see it, if you cannot convert it to polar coordinates, then you you should see it through the um, phase portrait, right? I said for shear representative values for lambda. Um, so, let's just um, talk a little bit. Like, and let me take this... Um, number 7 page 186 so that's a system that's written in terms of the polar polar coordinates r and theta now obviously we know that x how is x and y in terms of r and theta Right, so if you uh, 
I mean, in principle, you could actually see what the direction field uh, would be in the in the x y plane in terms of the x x and y, right? But it won't necessarily look pretty, right? Um, yeah. So we don't we don't want to convert it to the x y coordinates. But we want to, knowing that it's there, we want to kind of look at the solutions and the behavior of the solutions. And the polar coordinates are are, are helpful because um, you see r is distance from the origin. So if you just look at the r core, you see this decoupled. These are these are decoupled equations. So there is a if you have an initial condition r theta, you know if you start somewhere here, right? Initial condition. Then you can just look at the r components separately, and you can look at the theta components separately. So you see the r component just satisfies one of those simple first order equations which has some, um, well it has three equilibrium, zero, one, and negative one. So here I'm plotting R versus T. So you're just solving that decoupled system. Uh, these are three equilibria, so there are three horizontal lines, right? Meaning what does it mean? It means that if if r is 1, if you start on the, on the uh, circle of radius 1, then r is going to always stay 1. Um, can r be negative 1? Well, in this equation it can, but in the... Um, you know, back into the system here, it cannot, right? So r has to be positive. Right, but anyway. So what? What is the? Uh, what are the solutions? How are the solution look like? Uh, between zero and one, this guy is positive, so it goes like this, right? And between uh, above one, looks negative to me, so it goes down, right? So you see this for for this equation, the R equation, it's all the solutions approach radius one. Okay. So what this means is, in the x, y, if you start here, then you're going to stay on the circle, right? Of radius one. If you start outside, you're going to go towards it, right? And if you start start inside, you know you're also going to go in towards it, right? The, the only question is, how do you go? Do you go? How do you go towards that circle? Right? Well, uh, obviously the theta equation is going to tell you that information. So, and there's this parameter a. So, how do you decide? How do you decide? Theta is the angle, right? So. Theta increasing means you're rotating counterclockwise, right? So theta prime counterclockwise. Theta prime negative clockwise. Yeah. So. Obviously, like let's take a equals zero. If a equals zero, then theta prime is always a positive quantity. So you're you're, you're going counterclockwise. Actually, it talks about a bifurcation value a equals negative one. But let, let's just for a equals zero, theta prime is sine squared theta. It's always positive, right? And we don't have to solve this. I mean, we. We could, but we could try to solve it. 
but that's all we need to know is that independent of where you start, you're going to go counterclockwise. So counterclockwise means you're going Is that right? Even when you're on a circle, you know you're going counterclockwise, right? And when you're inside, you know you're going counterclockwise towards that circle. So you're going okay. So you have this special solution here, which is a periodic solution. Now, that's actually a proof that, he ha that that's a periodic solution. Actually, is it or is it not? Uh, let's see. We would have to... Yeah. Well... Here, yes, it's right that this is zero, so it slows down to a stop. Right? Yeah. So you're right. So it's not a periodic solution. So, right, so this point is an equilibrium. Exactly. This point is an equilibrium. Everybody, so when theta is zero, or pi, this actually is zero. So it stays there. If it starts there, it stays there, right? Here? Yeah. No, because if you are... Okay, so my picture is wrong then. Okay. So it doesn't spiral like this. Yeah, you have to be able to be careful. Um, well, I, I think the only two equilibria are these two points. N zero zero. Yes, you're right. Thank you. I, I forgot about that one. But if you are if you are in between, then you don't have a equilibrium. What what do you have? You actually I think have going from zero towards this or that, right? Because theta doesn't change, but r increases from zero to one. Yeah. So, okay. So, I'm sorry. Let me. I was thinking of the picture of of a different. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So my spiral was wrong. Yes, yes. So the spiral was wrong. So, so this is going like this, right? Now, something happens around on this circle, though. Okay, on the circle, what happens? There is a solution that goes, well, a solution that starts on the circle stays on the circle, right? But if, 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 if uh, theta prime is not zero, then it's going to go from this point towards that point, okay? So it's going to start, if you start anywhere here, it's going to go towards this point, right? And if you start anywhere below, you're going to go towards the other point. Yeah, so it's just a little bit more complicated. It's actually more interesting, right, than uh, probably for other values of A. Okay, so now what happens if you are in between? If you are if you're around here somewhere here? You're going towards the circle. You're also increasing, right? The question is, which one goes faster, right? Is it is it faster? Is this approaching the? Is it R going towards one faster than theta goes to to pi or not, right? 
Now, what happens when you go towards negative infinity? Well, you eventually have to go towards zero, right? With r, and theta is going to go clockwise, so you're going to eventually go here. The question is how fast, right? So it looks to me like this is how the picture of face portrait will look like. You agree with me? Something like this. And on the outside is is similar, right? Because it's again it's um, it's already coupled. This is for a equals zero, but let's see for um, a equals negative two. Why is this negative one the, the bifurcation? Why why at negative two it's a totally different picture? Well, sine sine square cannot be more than one, right? This is always negative. Right? Strictly negative. So, so the picture will be, again, this picture is in the xy, so that's important to realize. You have, now you have no longer any, no longer, uh, only one equilibrium at zero. Uh, yeah, when r is zero, right? But on the circle here, you have no equilibria and everything is clockwise, right? Right? And even if you're not on a circle, you're still gonna be going towards the circle in a clockwise, always clockwise. So that's that picture except. Okay? And you're going to negative infinity, you're always gonna go counterclockwise. Okay? Did I did I change it? No, it should be this way. Yeah, this should be coming out. Okay. And what happens at so uh, bifurcation at a equals negative one because theta prime, which is sine square theta minus one is less than or equal to zero, but it can be zero, right? And again, at the bifurcation you have, well, you have this equilibrium, and now you have where sine is one, or negative one. So that's at pi over two and negative pi over two. Right? And again, it's clockwise. But this not there's no periodic solution, right? In fact, looks to me like there is also bifurcation at zero be be because so if a is slightly less than negative one, then you have a periodic orbit. Right, but it's the same. The same is true if you, if a is slightly bigger than zero. Yeah. If if a is slightly bigger than zero, then you recover basically uh, periodic orbit going counterclockwise. So there's a bifurcation here too. So bifurcation. Right? I sh we should have started with a case when A is positive. To s that was basically the first picture I drew. Yep. So, you know, how do you um, represent this? It's, it's difficult to represent a bifurcation diagram, but if you were to kind of 
summarize this, you would say, you know, there, there are two, you know, important numbers, 0 and 81, for the parameter A. Um, there's always the equilibrium 0, so that's always going to be, I believe, an unstable equilibrium, right? Because you're always going away from 0. Right? Um, there are two. Uh, there are two more equilibria that show up. Right? Of course, there's a different. One is at zero and pi. One is at uh, pi over two and three pi over two. Right? And the important thing is the periodic orbit. So the periodic orbits are for less than one. For less than negative one, there is a periodic orbit, right? Going uh, whatever, clockwise or counterclockwise, I forgot. Clockwise. Yeah? Here, it, there is a periodic orbit, but it goes Counterclockwise. <coughs> okay. And what happens in between? Between zero and negative one, I think we didn't show. Well, when a is between zero and negative one that sine square can take the value sine square plus a uh, can be zero right in two places so there are actually four equilibrium right? you agree there are four? So A is between uh, negative 1 and 0. Theta prime is sine squared theta plus A is equal to 0 when sine squared. Just, just take 1 half. Or say A is negative 1 half. Then sine squared theta is 1 half means sine theta is plus or minus square root of 2 over 2, right? So sine goes like this, so it can be this or this, so there are four points, okay? So there are actually four equilibria, and there are the solutions that actually go, I think in this case it goes this and this, well, then here, is, I think it goes, you know, between all four in that circle, right? And back, when it gets back here, then it's somehow, well, not somehow, but what happens with these two points? So this, going this way, the two equilibria are shrinking to this one, and going this way, the two, I guess that the other two equilibria are shrinking. So you should get the same, anyway, you should get kind of a continuous picture as far as I don't think there is any other uh, bifurcation between this and that. Anyway, so you see that it can be actually quite uh, diverse. This kind of bifurcation could be could happen depending on the parameter. You could have um, more more steady states, you know, less fewer steady states or equilibria. Um, anyway, so number nine, I think it's a little bit easier because it's not sine squared. Well, I don't know. Could be more complicated actually. Um,
And again, this is not the optimal way of representing the bifurcation. You could, I mean, plotting a few face portraits. You know, add the bifurcation. So you should have, for this problem, you should have one, two, three, four, five pictures, you know, to indicate how the, uh, the, the face portrait changes with that parameter. Okay? Um, let's see. Well, for, for problems like this in this handout, uh, for the um, Poincaré Andronov Hof bifurcation, um, Has anybody uh, figured out what is what is in polar coordinates? R minus R cubed. Okay. So so see here is here the parameter is in the R in the R equation. So R prime is R lambda minus R squared. So uh, of course it depends if if lambda is negative, for instance, then you only see zero. So let's do it here like this. So it's just R, right? I mean, uh, it's just the R that gives you a sign. So it's, I think it's positive and it's negative when R is negative, right? So it means in the x, y face portrait, portrait um, well, of course, r negative doesn't play any role, right? So we can just ignore that piece. Okay? But it basically says it goes away from the origin, and it goes uh, in the theta variable. It's basically counterclockwise, uh, so it should go like this, right? Is that right? Oh, the lambda is negative. It goes towards the origin. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Just a change in sign. <laughs> so, so it should go. Uh, clockwise towards the origin. Yeah, and this makes the origin a uh, a sink, right? And uh, when lambda is when, when lambda is positive, you actually get three equilibrium, right? So zero square root of lambda minus square root of lambda. Again, this this piece is irrelevant, right? So this corresponds to lambda negative for lambda positive in the x y and so forth, right? So it gives you um, going up and then going down. So this, again clockwise, the circle of radius square of lambda is periodic. Okay. So um, so that's why that picture looks like well. Of course, zero is also uh, 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 equilibrium, but it's unstable. So, you see, if you were to kind of plot the, and I should use the colors, um, if you were to plot the um, sort of a bifurcation diagram, then you would see this 
periodic orbits that actually increase in radius, radius squared of lambda. Okay? And then this uh, equilibrium, which is the origin, is stable, and then it becomes unstable. Okay? So this is, this is a signature of what's called a Hopf bifurcation. There is a steady, I mean, a, a, yeah, a stable equilibrium as you, as, uh, you know, changes, it becomes unstable and a family of periodic orbits or periodic solutions uh, emerge at this bifurcation point. And it's also possible, uh, I believe this is called supercritical, It's also possible to have uh, the other bifurcation. So we have a periodic solution, you know, that kind of shrinks in size as you move that parameter, lambda, and then it disappears and, and there's only one equilibrium. Okay? There are all kinds of other, uh, this would be super critical. Uh, Subcritical, I think, but th there are other ways in which you know a periodic orbit can actually exist for a range of parameters and then disappear altogether. You know, so there are all kinds of things. Uh, I think this is called sub subcritical. Hopf bifurcation. Okay. Yeah, there has uh, there has to be in in two dimensions, but you know this really is it can happen in higher dimensions, and in that case it doesn't necessarily. But if it's if it's in two dimensions, you have a periodic solution. We'll we'll talk. This is kind of part of the gl uh, global uh, techniques that we're going to talk about. So so uh, let me say if um, a planner dynamical system um, admits a periodic orbit so you know it looks I don't know it looks like this right uh, then Um, there exists an equilibrium uh, inside the uh, periodic, well, inside the, the region, the region bounded by by the periodic orbit. And that's actually something well, assuming, assuming of course uh, the, the, the dynamical system is is defined everywhere inside here okay um, so yeah I mean the answer is yeah I mean it could be several it could be five five period, five equilibrium. Um, right? It's all nonlinear. Everything can happen. I mean, pretty much everything can happen. Uh, okay, so uh, let me see what I want to say. Oh, uh, the one with a homoclinic or saddle loop bifurcation. Yeah. Um, Today we're going to talk about, well, hopefully today or not, uh, if not Wednesday, um, about Hamiltonian systems for which this, I believe, is, is one of them. Uh, let me see.
that is not quite um, at least one lambda is zero yeah okay so let me just uh, but again I, I, I don't think I, uh, I've asked you to uh, do any of this but find the equilibrium and then then uh, plot you know a few uh, above lambda equals zero and below lambda equals zero but for lambda equals zero this uh, ends up being a um, Hamiltonian system which we're going to talk about okay so there's going to be classes of, of systems for which we can say more things yeah it does okay That's right. So I think the picture looks, um, yeah, x prime equals y. Well, for lambda equals zero, I know it kind of looks like this, right? Yeah. Considered a bifurcation, if this, the uh, equilibrium changes major, for lambda equals zero, there's concentric uh, periodic orbits about the one zero. Okay. But for every other value of lambda, it's either a sink or a source. Is that a bifurcation? Yes, bifurcation every single time the nature of the equilibrium changes. Is it still a bifurcation if you go from a spiral sink to a regular sink? From a spiral sink, no, it wouldn't be a bifurcation. Well, again, I think it depends on what you call bifurcation. Bifurcation usually is, um, well, if it changes the nature, if, if basically you have different properties of that equilibrium being attracting solutions or how it attracts, I you know, you can call it bifurcation too, but it's not a essential bifurcation, right? Bifurcation is when things just appear, right? Periodic orbits appear, or um, saddles disappear, right? And or maybe these two just kind of collide, get get to uh, one point. Um, so yeah, when the, alpha, when the lambda is positive or negative, I think it's just um, well. You just 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 draw the pictures. I think uh, should give you that. So you think it's an ambiguous situation for lambda above zero and below zero. Yeah. And for the other thing, the plan is less than zero as it's seen. Okay, so it looks still like this? Not really, huh? No. Well, it, it sort of starts as far away. Yeah, I, I have the picture here. I don't want to. Right. Okay, here it is. Okay, so. Well, if it's changed from a sink to a source, it is a bifurcation, yeah. Uh, so it, here it's, I see, so it goes like this. So this is the saddle, right? And then here it comes out, goes in. Here it's just going this way. And uh, where is this going? Is this going towards the equilibrium here? Yep. 
maybe not the same one so yeah you see this is a good example of I mean this is, this is a different type of verification which actually is is important um, this in lambda equals zero, there is so-called, uh, this is what's called a homoclinic. That's where this name came, comes from. This is a homoclinic orbit. What does it mean homoclinic orbit? It means that when um, t goes to plus infinity, it actually approaches that equilibrium, zero, right? Just imagine on the x-axis. This is the x-axis, right? Just imagine you plot x versus t. So you do a time plot. You can do that in in, in OD, OD solve. Uh, then what do you see? You're basically going to see something that at infinity goes to zero, right? At negative infinity also goes to zero. And you see it has kind of a peak, depending where you, when you start. Like if you start, I don't know, if you start at time equals zero here, then the peak would actually be right at time equals zero, right? It's basically saying that, so this is a solution x and the corresponding y. What's The y would be, let's see, it goes, eventually becomes negative and then goes to zero, right? So it come, I think it is, yes. okay. Can you trace this, like in your in your mind? So, so that that's how the solution um, evolves. Say when t equals zero, then x decreases to zero, and y, you know, is negative and goes to zero. So it decreases to some value and then it goes back. Okay. And then it's the same way on the on the y-axis. So this is called homoclinic orbit because it has uh, limits at one end of the axis and the other, the same point, right? This is the contrast. The uh, so this is not periodic, right? It's not periodic. It's not steady state, but it's a special solution. It goes from one uh, equilibrium to another equilibrium to the same equilibrium. Okay? You don't have this when you change the parameter lambda. Okay? You no longer, what's the solution here going to look like? Well, you see, it starts at this, at this equilibrium, at negative infinity, and then it goes to the other equilibrium at plus infinity. Right? So basically, that, that homoclinic orbit disappears. So that's, that's kind of the. Uh, Bifurcation that this this homoclinic orbit is 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 broken disappears. Okay. Actually, in the first example, we had a diff yet another type of. Um, remember this. There was a solution that went from one equilibrium to another equilibrium at plus infinity. That's called heteroclinic. In fact, you can also put it here. So this would be, it starts one, uh, one and then it goes to the other. This is called heteroclinic. Orbit. Okay? Anyway, so these are kind of um, properties that you cannot, you cannot see from, say, linearizing that system. It just doesn't doesn't tell you. It's not the behavior around a point is not telling you what happens out, uh, you know, away from that point. Okay? It's more of the uh, nature of this uh, of the of the entire phase portrait. Um, I don't know where this goes at negative. Well, this at plus infinity goes to zero, right? But where it comes from, I believe it just it doesn't come from an equilibrium, right? So that would not be a this would not be any any solution that we, we would call anyway, and right? I think it just go, comes from there, right? 
Unless there's another equilibrium somewhere which, which we don't, well, there's none, I think you can compute that. Okay? So, you can call this, this bifurcation from a homoclinic to a heteroclinic orbit to be that bifurcation. Okay? So, So this is, pretty, I mean, a good good example of what can happen with a nonlinear system away from equilibrium. So far, we just looked at uh, systems around equilibrium, right? And we said, um, you know, if the linearization uh, has negative eigenvalues, then we know it's a sink. If it's positive eigenvalues, we know it's a source. But that's just be in the neighborhood of the point, right? We don't. The linearization around an equilibrium has gives no information away. Like there could be a periodic orbit some somewhere out there that we don't we don't see when we linearize. Yeah? So what kind of techniques can can um, can be used to kind of incorporate that local information in the global picture? Well, one of them is this idea of null clines. Um, which really works for planar systems. So I'm going to have two, equal, two, two, uh, two equations with two variables x and y. Of course, this is the same as, as putting this, you know, in vector form, right? It's the same thing. We're not, but. Now I'd like to kind of uh, give more identity to the uh, right-hand side. So let's call it little f and little g. Okay, a planar system. And one thing to, um, well, so we know that the equilibrium are points where F and G vanish simultaneously, right? Simultaneously. That's how you find equilibrium. You solve that system. Okay? So there is the following idea. How do you you know how do you find equilibrium? Well, um, is so the equilibrium are um, the intersection points of the null clines which are defined as the curves I put them in quotes unquote where one of the right hand side, so this would be the x null cline, is zero. So f is zero, or g is zero. This is the y null cline. Okay? And uh, let's see, I'm going to try to use two different colors just to, I don't know, red and. Uh, blue just to okay so this would be the y null cline so let's what, what does it mean that um, uh, that we find null clines of a system so here's an example Okay, so x prime equals, um, 
let me do this one here x minus x cubed y prime equals uh, excuse me x minus y minus x cubed and y prime is x minus 1 Okay, so so what does it mean that we 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 uh, well eventually we'd like to find the equilibrium and all that, but let's let's for now just uh, focus on the null coin. So you set the first the first right hand side equal to zero, and you see what what kind of points satisfy that in the x y plane, and then you do the same for the second equation, and you f you figure out what. Um, Uh, it's a little bit too easy. Let me <laughs> let me do two x minus y here. Okay. Okay. So so the x null clines null cline would be. The set of points for which this equation x minus y minus y cubed or y equals x minus x cubed. So we can plot that in the xy plane. Let's see, it has, right, it's, um, looks like this. It's a cubic function that has 0, 1, and negative 1 as the. Uh, Okay, as the uh, zeros. Well, so that's the graph of the x null line. So let me let me draw it as a red curve. And the y null line is two x minus y equals zero. So that means y equals two x. So that's Something like that, right? Okay. So what are these what are these curves? Well this curve of course the intersection of these curves will give you the points where both right hand sides are, are zero, so where the equilibria exists, right? So that's of course, that's one uh, one thing. So if you plot now both, so the face portrait, has basically this curve. It should be symmetric, right? And it has the blue curve. OK? So obviously in this case there's only one intersection, so there's only one equilibrium. But there's more information that this null clients give, and, and that is remember what does this, what does it mean that f is zero on that curve? It means that a point well it means that a solution that goes through that point has the derivative of x equal to zero. So remember, if you want to plot the, f the direction field in this picture on at a point here, then what would we see? What direction we would see? It should be an arrow pointing in which direction? No, x prime has to be zero. So x is here. X. Just horizontal, right? Uh, no, vertical, right? Vertical. X. X doesn't change. Well, x has the derivative of zero at that point, right? So if you remember how how do you do the direction field for a two, for a two-dimensional one, it would be vertical. Now, is it up or down? This is actually mentioned by 
So let me remind you here. Oh, if I have this point here in the plane, then this is going to be F and this is going to be G. And the point, the direction is going to be right in that direction. So what we have to figure is, is um, well, we have to figure the direction of G, or the sine of G, is it up or down? Is, is Y increasing or decreasing at this point, right? But we know that there is no X. X doesn't change as you move, you know, at this instantaneous X doesn't change, right? So it's going to be vertical. How about here? It's going to be horizontal, right? Along the Y uh, null line. So, So to complete the picture, so this is y prime is zero. So to complete the picture, you would have to figure the sine of g in this portion of the plane and in this portion of the plane, and the sine of f above and below this this null plane, in order to be be able to figure out the direction field on the null planes. So let's see, can we figure this out? F. How is f? below that null line. Well, f was what? f was this, right? So, x minus x cubed minus y. So, if I'm, if I'm on the null line, then f is zero, right? If I'm below the null line, y is less than what it is on the null line. So there's a minus y there, so f is positive, right? Below the null plane. And above the null plane, f is negative. Okay, it takes a little bit to kind of get used to this, but right? So it's the whole thing is what is on the north line is zero, so below y is less, so minus y is more, right? So, okay. This is the same for g. So I don't know. If you want to call it below? Okay, it could be below. Below and to the right is the same thing of the of the y null line. It's the same thing on an arc line. Y equals two x, right? So below the null line is going to be bigger or less than zero. Bigger, right? Because y is less. So two x minus y is, is bigger. So g is positive. Now, notice that I'm putting four, I'm, I'm kind of distinguishing four regions. What, and what are the four regions? Well, basically all the regions that are delimited by this null clients, right? And uh, F is, and, and above, above that uh, Y null client, G is negative, right? All right, so now we got it. Uh, so now let's draw the, the direction field. So the direction field will be here. Is it going to be up or down? It's we know it's vertical, right? Well, who tells you? G is negative here, right? So it should be down, right? Okay. And on this side, G is positive, so it should be up, okay? And um, on the Y null line, so the other null line, directions are all horizontal because Y prime is zero, so G is zero. So, and on this side, F is negative, so it's going to the left, Right? And below is going to the right horizontally. Okay? 
So just that information kind of tells you what is the solution going to do. Lux is going to go clock, counterclockwise, right? But we don't know if it's going to spiral in or spiraling out or what, right? All we know is that, so anyway, this was just, all we know is that if it's here, F is negative, G is positive, right? If it's here, goes like this. If it's here, goes like that. If it's here, it goes like this, right? But we don't have any information if I start here to know how how soon it actually turns around and something like that, right? So to do that, you still need more information. I mean, you need, you know, I mean, you could just use a a computer to, you know, to figure that out. I mean, to plot the solutions and. Um, It's going to take a little bit um, to figure out how solutions so really behave, right? Because that could be going like if you're here, you could actually be going like this and then going spiraling up, right? Or you could be going spiraling in, or so forth. So while this is while that is uh, starting, let me give you another example of yes, yeah. So if there were Two equilibrium points, you would have whatever turns out to be eight sections. You have more, yeah. Depending on how many regions this, this is homoclinic. Yeah, and uh, and you can um, you can get lots of lots of uh, portions. Like you could um, you could have a homoclinic. I mean, excuse me. Um, you could have an alkline that consists of two curves, like two vertical lines. You know, you can easily see that. You can. Right, a right hand side that has two zeros, right? Um, let me see, is this one? Yeah, this is this is one of those examples. So x prime equals x squared minus one, y prime equals minus x y plus a x squared minus one. This is even a, this is has a parameter in it. Um, So this exhibits, well, let's see what it exhibits. Um, let's start with a equals 0. When a equals 0, what are the null clines? You see, that's actually the best way to kind of look for equilibrium. Instead of saying, I'm going to set both equal to 0 and deal with that mass, uh, with that system, right? It's easiest to just say, well, let's just see what the first equation equal to zero gives you. Well, assuming that you can uh, find it. Uh, so what would be that one? X equals plus or minus one, right? And what's the other one? Well, either X equals zero or Y equals zero. Right? So what are the equilibrium? Now, it has to be at the crossing of a, of a red null client and a blue null client. It cannot be at the crossing of, right, of two blue ones, because then that's not, an, that's not an equilibrium. Okay, let me see if that came out. All right, so that's... Um, Okay, and now uh, obviously if you have a different from zero, then you're going to have the same red null clients, but the blue null clients are going to change, right? So what happens with the signs, you know, uh, with, the, with the trajectories, with the direction field? Well, on the red null clients, everything is x prime is zero, so it actually is going to be vertical. Right? So these things are vertical. So there's everything that starts there stays there. Right? Um, of course, the sine is going to be dictated by the sine of the 
of the right-hand side of the y prime. So let's see, x times y with a negative is negative here, positive. Right? First octant, first quadrant is negative. So th this thing goes down. Right? And I think this goes the opposite. So those are like two walls, right? The solutions that start in between stay within this, solutions that stay here. Uh, and for the Y, everything is, excuse me, for the blue ones, everything is uh, is um, horizontal, right? So everything that starts here, let's say, is it going left or right? At this point, left, right? Because x squared minus one is negative, so it goes. So x is decreasing in that region. Oops. Excuse me. Stays negative here too. Right? Stays negative here, 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 everywhere. And of course, I think here it goes the opposite way. Okay. So now you've figured uh, the nature of this equilibrium. Well, and now if you were to kind of guess solutions, what would the solution do if it starts here? You see, in between it should go this way, right? This should go this way. Why do I know? How do I know that? If it comes this way, and then the flow it has to, you know, the river goes this way, then it has to kind of follow the river, right? So it has to follow somehow. Oops. So it looks like a solution might might actually do this, right? Here is the same. Well, here it goes like that, right? Again, you have to be careful with the signs. All of these signs have to be. Um, okay. Now, this is one example. If you start on the, uh, you know, with with uh, x equals zero, with y equals zero, excuse me. Then you move from this equilibrium to this equilibrium, right? So that's a heteroclinic orbit, right? Now, as you change A, um, and you draw the same null clines, well, as I said, one like the red null clines are the same, but the blue null clines change. Uh, how do they change? Well, it looks like a lot messier, but a, y is going to be a function of x. You can solve for y in terms of x. So you can plot that, right? And when you plot that, you're going to see that, that the, the heteroclinic, uh, I, I believe, disappears. So in fact, Here's the, uh, I won't have the time to do this, but it's actually in the book. Um, the, the, the red null clines are the same. Um, huh? uh, let's see, x equals zero. Is not an alkaline, but yeah, the blue ones become something like this. Okay, so you still have two equilibria, but you see the uh, when you try to follow these solutions, they're actually going to be. <coughs> Yeah.
going like this, and I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but I think that you, you, if you start here, you know, if you start anywhere here, you're gonna go to. You're gonna be forced to go to infinity. See? So you're not gonna reach the other equilibrium. Do you see what I'm doing? Yeah. So if you start, if you start anywhere around this one. Yeah, you see this. There's a, there's a separating curve. There's a curve that separates this two, right? So there's no more hetero heteroclinic orbit, right? So that would be just a. Uh, I think for a positive and for a negative. Yeah, for a negative is also no no um, uh, heteroclinic orbit. Okay, so that, that's that's a bifurcation because uh, there's a change in. Um, so I think it goes this way. Yeah, everything goes downhill, I mean, to the left. It goes to the left, but there are things that go like this. Um, same, up, down, down, left. Okay. So notice that the null clients themselves are not solutions. They're not solutions. In fact, anything that hits the null client, you know what's happening, right? What is it happening when it hits a blue null client? It crosses it crosses it, right? Horizontally, right? So unless the null client itself is horizontal then it's not going to stay the same. So the null clients are not directions of the solutions. They're just kind of addition to, um, and I'm, I'm out of time, so I'll, I'll just mention this. <clears throat> um, if you do p-plane, and you, you know, find the direction field, then you can actually go and show null clients. And then you can you can actually see where the equilibria are. You see? And not only that, you can almost you can kind of see that um, well, they use different colors, but um, you can see that when you cross an all line, you either cross it horizontally or vertically, right? depending which one you cross. Okay, here you cross them vertically, right? Here they're horizontal. So there's kind of constraints the, the, the dynamics of the solutions. You know, for instance, in this, you know what, what's going to happen with the solutions, right? Once they enter this region, they're going to go towards that equilibrium but not not go above or below right so you can see it by by our fancy way of sol of solving the solutions right you see that but you see so in other words from here you can never go above but but from here you can actually go right from above here you, you actually cross this and enter this region right so we just started talking about this nonlinear techniques, but one of the techniques is to actually identify regions in the plane or in the phase space that stay invariant, that kind of suck all the solutions. You know, so you can see this region is actually such a solution, right? Such a region. Everything that starts here cannot escape. Okay. Put this uh, equilibrium here. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. This the null clients don't tell much about this solution, this equilibrium, right? <sighs> so it's it's a spiraling in or spiraling out, I think. Spiraling out, right? Um, but but again, look at this. I mean it's it's not a surprise, right? But I mean it just every time you hit a null client, either hit it horizontally or vertically and you know you know which way, depending on the color. I mean, it's a simple. You have the system of equations, and if you set only one equal to zero, then you know it's going to be you know horizontal or vertical. But 
So anyway, so so as you read the examples, you know, maybe in the book and so, always have the picture in front of you and, and kind of match those things and it's going to give you information about the global behavior. And we'll, we'll continue.